This week on Linux for Everyone, Jason had on Zebedee Boss, one of our favorites, about finding the elusive forever distro. Now, I found my forever distro, the second forever distro, I should say, I found. And so this is kind of near and dear to my heart because, you know, Zeb, he, he hopped around for quite a while. And although I wasn't a major hopper, distro hopper, I found that when I found something that kind of met most of my criteria, I just decided to kind of entrench myself and just start modifying what was around me to kind of suit my needs. Now, Eric, are you a distro hopper? I am a hopper, but I'm also a safe hopper in a couple of different respects where I will dual boot and have a primary distribution as my main. And no matter what happens, that stays. And it's got all of my software and everything's set up the way it needs to be so that at a moment's notice, if I'm on that second install and something goes sideways on me or I've spent too much time trying to get things done the way it should just work, I can always just boot back into the primary install and get my work done. But I can then satisfy the urge to distro hop. The other thing I tend to do is a lot of virtual machines, and I know that people criticize that that's not really testing out a distribution, but, you know, I say pshaw to that. <laughs> like, it's it's good <laughs> enough, right? I mean, I, I can load up the distro, install it, see how the installer works, you know, see the default, des- like, everything you want to get out of a distro experience from a, a cursory level, from a high level, I can satisfy that urge just with a virtual machine. Yeah, I would say it's a 90% solution at least. I mean, it, it's not 100% to testing out a distro, but it definitely gets you 90% of the way there. You're going to figure out pretty quick, I mean, assuming you're, you're the, the system that you're running the virtual machine on top of is beefy enough to handle it, you're going to determine pretty quickly if it's going to fit your needs, and then you can do further testing from there. I've also sort of arrived at, I have my favorites that I trust and I know work. And just like with you and OpenSUSE, like you, you just sort of become familiar with the tool set, with the underlying system, with the package manager, just sort of the way that you use the system and you're comfortable with that. You don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about it and you can be efficient and rely on the stability, whatever the virtues of that system are. Now, will it, is it a forever distro? I don't know if I would call it a forever distro, but for me... Ubuntu-based systems are usually my best bet for all of the reasons I just mentioned. And whether that's Kubuntu or Ubuntu or any of the flavors or and then any of the hundreds of other distributions that use Ubuntu as a base, I have a certain comfort level there that I don't have with other distros. And so I tend to gravitate towards those. So I guess I could say that in practice over the last 15 years, I've probably run Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distros more than anything else. So that could be a forever perspective. But I'm also not so set in my ways to think that there isn't some other possible option that comes up at some point that is more ideal or is something more interesting, more stable, more performant, whatever, that can, you know, supplant Ubuntu, but for the time being, and I think you feel exactly the same way. Uh, yep. Uh, it just, it's what makes sense for me. I found that, uh, you know, there, there isn't a perfect distro, really. And I believe that once you find your perfect distro, as soon as you arrive, it's no longer perfect. So. <laughs> well, and I think you can also say that there's just no such thing as a perfect computer, a perfect operating system, yeah, perfect right. software. Like it, it is all so subjective in many, many ways that it's a, what is perfect for you is not going to be perfect for someone else. Exactly. And, and the other thing too is like, I, you know, I've been on, on Linux for quite a long time. And so I changed my hardware purchasing habits. Now this might, uh, might make Ryan kind of turn over and, and maybe Ralph one, but I never buy new hardware for Linux. Like I, I, when I buy hardware, I'm like, what is a year or two old that will fit my needs? And that's how I've been purchasing hardware because then I know it's going to work on my distribution of choice. And I also don't buy any, <clears throat> no, that's not true. I say I don't buy anything crazy, but that's not true at all. I don't, uh, I don't have hardware issues because I, I tend to go for the, uh, the hardware that I know is going to work. And so I, I don't run into, you know, people, I hear people complain on different, you know, in the, in the, uh, Dest- in the Destination Linux Telegram group or on the discourse, something about having hardware issues or these weird things happen. And the reason I probably don't see that is because the hardware that I have is pretty well, how would you say it? It's uh, 
burned in. It's a. Uh, it's, it's well tested. It's pretty well established. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So some other LTS hardware. Yes, I buy LTS hardware. Every computer I have ever built, I will always use last generation hardware. Number one, because right. it's less expensive. And number two, most importantly, I know there's a level of compatibility there because others have taken the time to work out those problems. I can go on YouTube. There's a hundred videos on how to make this thing work. And like the Ryzen 7 system I just built, you know, Ryzen 7 2700X, that motherboard, the all of it in terms of compatibility there's no question that it's going to work because it's a year out from, from release. Everything's had a chance to catch up to it. And what was I going to get in terms of performance and benefit from the 3700 or the, you know, the, the third generation Ryzen chips? And, and a year old is not old for hardware. I don't think five years old is old either. So, I mean, I'm not one to judge there. But actually, I think that people like Ryan are important, though, because somebody's got to be that, that first wave of people to go do the testing and the debugging and the you know the bug reports and to help get this get the thing kind of ironed out. So that's actually an important role. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> I look back at the long history of building my own PCs, and I have always chosen the last gen as my base. Yeah, no, I, I've been the same way. Even when I, I got my Nintendo Entertainment System when the Super Nintendo came out because I wanted to get the games cheaper. That's the kind of kid I was. Maybe there's something wrong with me. I don't know, but it worked out well for me. I still have that Nintendo, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> In the uh, the Super Cubicle basement, right? Yeah, actually, it's right here. I'm looking at it. Back to the point, though, about finding that elusive forever distro. You know, I think the really comes down to and Jason it's it's fun to see Jason sort of go through this realization as a newer Linux user because you do have to take some time and take stock of what's out there what do I like why do I like it what don't I like uh, what works well what doesn't you know all of the sort of uh, undulations of coming to terms with what Linux is and we went and we talked about all the choice and the complexity and all of that and and he's gotten to the point where he doesn't accept things at face value he's starting to invest investigate and do more power user type things. And so he, you do sort of arrive at that conclusion eventually where you separate concerns and you say, well, the underlying distribution gives me this set of capabilities and then the desktop environment of choice, whether or not that's available, that becomes a concern. And then what software am I using and how is it all put together? What's the community like? There's so many different factors at play. So to just land on one thing or to say that there is a forever or a perfect distro, it's kind of impossible because like you said, there is no perfect really anything. So it becomes a matter of what's the best choice for you. Right. But, but even though the reality is what is best for you today may not be what's best for you you know, a year from now. It seems to me anyway that how I use my computer has drastically changed in the last 10 years. I used hardly any kind of cloud service or streaming activity or, or anything like that. There, there was no subscriptions to YouTube videos until what, maybe two or three years ago for me, not three years ago. So it's kind of, uh, you know, how I'm using my computer has greatly changed. And, and as such, the demands on the hardware has changed for me as well. I was fine with low grade video for a long time when I'd, you know, rip my DVDs. And so there really wasn't a need for something very powerful. But now all of a sudden, what I want has shifted. And so my expectations now for a Linux distribution for me to use has greatly shifted. I didn't care about DRM 2013. You know, yeah, I had Netflix, but I didn't care to stream it. You know, I had, I, I got the, got the DVDs, right? But now DRM, you know, that DRM module in Firefox, that's kind of important. The, uh, the different, Codex and such, those are all important now, but those weren't always important. So, you know, what, what's important to me is going to change again. I guess when I say, when, when I think of forever distro, uh, it's, um, it's good for now. Maybe not forever, but it's good for now. 